Uh, thank you. Uh, well, uh, we prepared a paper together with uh, Porsche Kolob from the Faculty of Social Sciences, and the title is, as you see, PR Beyond Neoliberalism, Sticking with the Status Quo or uh, Is Not a Viable Option. Uh, as a beginning, I uh, start with a, with, a, uh, with a quotation from Adam Smith from uh, 1776. And uh, I think that this is the beginning of the econo econocentric approach to public relations because, as you can see, he was deeply aware of the role of public relations uh, because the businessmen of that time, they, they were in a conspiracy against the public. Uh, so as a starting point, um, we took uh, the, 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 the words of Professor Lamichak from the PRR, uh, uh, Public Relations Review, uh, when, uh, where he says, uh, where he asks himself, uh, can we blame public relations for the present uh, economic uh, and to what extent to the present economic and financial crisis? Uh, to our view, there are, there are two basic approaches to, to the role of the PR practitioners in the firms, in the firms and these are a neoliberal and a post-Keynesian uh, Keynesian approach to public relations. So, uh, we have tried to, in our paper to categorize the firms. Uh, we, we, you will see there are four categories. Uh, according to their approach to, to, to the environment and their behavior, their decision making. Uh, the first is uh, the view that, world, that, the, that the world is ergodic or non-ergodic. Uh, this term is uh, borrowed from mathematics and statistics, but I'm not a mathematician. Uh, uh, but uh, let me simply explain what it is. Uh, Ergodic world, uh, I mean, ergodic view means that uh, they, that uh, it means that uh, that we view the system, the systems will go will go back to its uh, uh, starting position. So the system recurs. Uh, this is the ergodic view. The non-ergodic view, uh, of course, says that uh, the system will not recur to, to its uh, um, basic position. And uh, it implies that the actions of the firms are important uh, in the second case, in the non ergodic case. In the ergodic case, the actions are not important. Then we have, and it is shown at that, uh, at that first picture. Then the next thing is, uh, so whatever the businessmen do, the system will record, there, will no, there are no consequences. The next thing is that uh, the difference between instrumental and contextual rationality. Uh, let me start with contextual rationality. Contextual rationality means that uh, the that the firm uh, is able from the chaos uh, is able to extract the context, and according according to that context, it uh, behaves. It 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 makes its, its decisions. Uh, so, uh, because the context are, the context, I mean the relations with the stakeholders, they are constantly changing, but the firm is able to extract the, the, the context. The other case is then when the firm uh, views, uh, when the firm acts instrumentally rational and it grabs the first, each and every profit opportunity, for example, and, uh, and, uh, 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 and, uh, and behave in that way. So now we have matchings. Matchings between ergodic or non-ergodic environment on the horizontal side and instrumental rationality and contextual rationality on the vertical side. And now we get four cases, four cases of behavior. The first case is if, is the first, the first case is uh, uh, a case of maximizing short-term profit. It means that, uh, that the firm grabs the profit opportunity and uh, that this action will not 
will not change the environment, the, envir the environment, because the system will go back, as ergodic approach says, there are now consequences on the systems, different systems in the, in the, in the economy and the society. Then we have a, a contextual rationality, where the firm extracts the content, but uh, thinks all the, but thinks that the, the system, the, the environment, the, the, there will be no consequences, and uh, it is a, a case of a myopic uh, risk reduction. Then we have the firm. Both these cases, uh, number one and number two, are uh, neoliberal because neoliberal or neoclassical economy thinks that the, the system goes back to general equilibrium approach, to general equilibrium. There are no cases, no, uh, no influences, no impacts of a, of a particular firm. And then we have uh, uh, the firms which, uh, which view the environment as non uh, ergodic, but uh, if they grab the profit opportunities, then uh, they, this results in a somehow contradictory behavior. And then we have firms, which is an ideal case, where they see that the, the systems are, uh, that the, the, the uh, uh, environment is non-ergodic, and they have to be careful about the changing contact, and so their, their, their final result should be the long-run survival. Now we take an example of the, of the uh, of the movie, which someone of you I have, uh, I'm not sure if you can see, but it is the story about the, uh, the, the film is called uh, is called Margin Call. It is a film which shows uh, the last 38 hours uh, of a big investment firm where John Todd, the CEO of the firm, decides um, to sell to sell the, the, the papers of the company uh, because uh, he, his mathematicians, they calculate that the firm will go bankrupt. And so he decides tomorrow morning we start selling our, uh, our, our papers, uh, uh, whatever the price. Because the, price is, the price is falling from the 8 o'clock in the morning until 2 o'clock in the afternoon from 1 for 90 to 2 8. So this is a, 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 a an um, example of, um, of, of, um, of the first case that's in the previous here, maximizing short-term profit. You see how he, he thinks about the environment. You see, it's all just the same thing over and over. So he thinks that the system will, will recur to, the, to, its, uh, to its position, uh, starting position, and there will be no consequences of his acts. We just react. We just react to our situation. So he decided to grab the profits, um, um, you know, to grab the profits uh, uh, as, he, as, he, as he could at that, at that night and at that morning. Uh, and now the question, the next question is, and uh, Ursha is going to deal with that. What did he tell to the, uh, his PR department? Did he, did he inform? the PR department about the situation, so the PR department was um, aware of the situation or, or, was, or didn't he, he tell? So that is the question, and Ursha is going to tell you about that. Thank you, I have to be really quick, we are running out of time. Uh, before I do that, um, I will just uh, Slowly, uh, I would just shortly return to the uh, fourth uh, type of behavior in the previous metric, uh, just to understand the the the, um, the context, um, because the fourth um, fourth behavior can be explained uh, using the post keynesian view, and uh, there are actually four main points that are important here. First, the post keynesian view is really close to. Uh, to sociologic approaches. So it sees uh, the environment as an open system that cannot be precisely modeled. And uh, therefore, the actions of big players are, of course, do have consequences, and these consequences are not predictable. Uh, the second thing is that um, 
The actual, actual consequences are not really certain and they are not known in the future. Therefore, uh, everything that is created in the, in the, um, in the uh, present uh, may not necessarily be uh, the future that, that uh, the, the actors uh, intended. And the third uh, thing is that uh, that's why actors have to be forward looking uh, and uh, try, to, um, try to create some sort of con conventions that deal with uncertainty uh, and be, um, be prone to growth and safety. And the fourth thing is that um, they have to act and think strategically because strategic, strategic decisions actually concern uh, choices that are made about the relationship between the firm and the environment. So this is a strategic thinking. And this, um, this, all this uh, we try to apply to the understanding of the role of the public relations uh, function. Uh, and here is another matrix uh, which uh, again has um, four boundaries and um, the, the first uh, polar opposites are ignorant and aware. Uh, this means that um, the role of public relations uh, can be uh, seen in terms of awareness of what is happening in the firm and in the environment. So uh, the public relations uh, officers can be uh, oblivious of what is happening or can be aware, aware of what is happening. And uh, the, the other two boundaries are, um, are uh, regard the uh, information. Um, so uh, one, um, one polar is concealing relevant information of, of uh, crucial uh, decision-making processes in the firm and the other one is uh, sharing this information uh, openly. So uh, again, we, we get uh, four different types of, of behavior and three of them are more related to neoliberal thinking and the fourth one is again uh, nicely explained with post-Keynesian uh, approach. Uh, so the first one, in the first one, public relations um, has no active role uh, in, in the firm or has a sort of a promotional, promotional function. Uh, in the second one, um, uh, the function is to um, make automatic justifications, to uh, make arguments out of authority in order to preserve independence of the firm. Um, however, um, this um, can also mean manipulating with information and, um, and providing uh, deceptive information. The third one is um, a bit naive maybe, uh, because um, public relations function or department is not really uh, involved into the main um, decision-making processes, but they think that um, they are doing a good job with uh, um, projecting what the firm is about and uh, sharing information that they, they have uh, uh, openly. So they are trying to reconstruct this um, hostile environment uh, by uh, by projecting this desired image, and uh, the fourth, the fourth one is actually um, uh, uh, based on this um, post-Keynesian premises, where firm is embedded into environment and is interdependent, and uh, actually public relations function uh, must play a vital role in this, and. Uh, it um, has to be continuously prepared for public focus in order to build legitimacy and trust. And uh, here are just a few um, implications out of this four, four type of behavior. Um, so through, through the uh, lenses of post-Keynesianism, we can say that um, it is um, obvious that this non-ergodic uh, non environment, in this environment, agents uh, cannot make uh, monocontextual de decisions or be oblivious of the outside environment. Uh, this is not actually beneficiary for them because firms' functional um, inter interdependencies may not be accepted by the society or uh, is, is therefore uh, not legitimate. And this is nicely, in the role of, uh, of uh, public relations is also nicely stated in this um, quote which was made uh, by a 
uh, economist uh, Knight in 1921, <coughs> who said that, of course, um, it is important um, uh, to decide what to do and how to do, and this, this should not be a coincidence, and therefore, um, uh, taking into account the environment and so on and context, uh, uh, public relations play a crucial role in he uh, here. And um, since public relations, uh, since this post uh, Keynesian view is uh, really um, based on this notion of open system, can also be nicely related to, uh, to um, for example, Lumen's reflective perspective. And uh, out of here, um, we can also um, uh, conclude three points. So uh, one is that um, that uh, public relations um, can help uh, a firm to see that its, per its perspective is just one of many. And uh, the other one is that uh, it can also um, exercise some control inside of organization with ne negotiating knowledge, uh, sense making and so on. And the third one is that um, it also um, has to be sensitive and motivated to uh, develop some sort of self-restrictions uh, self um, because, of course, uh, uh, the firm has to acknowledge its inter in, 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 in the interdependence and uh, it has to acknowledge the uh, uncertainty of environment. Uh, so to sum up, up uh, we think that uh, this post-Keynesian view um, can offer us a sort of a, a shift in, in thinking, in understanding how uh, in present conditions the role of uh, public relations um, can be. And I think uh, there is also a nice example um, from practice. Um, uh, uh, you all know Goldman Sachs and uh, maybe you've heard of the, of the recent um, scandal uh, which, uh, which went on in spring when their uh, UK CEO resigned and uh, sent uh, really, um, a really uh, bad um, letter to the New York Times uh, revealing uh, how this corporation works and how greedy it is and so on. Uh, and at that time, they actually, um, their, their public relations uh, was um, for many years non-existent and then they had this, uh, 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 this uh, spokesman that, were, that really made some uh, uh, manipulative and, um, uh, and uh, deceptive, um, uh, deceptive statements that are uh, also known uh, in the press. And uh, so they, they actually, uh, at this point, decided to um, build up their public relations department and uh, try to um, acknowledge that they are not, that they are not just an independent unit somewhere and uh, uh, that they uh, should consider what is happening around them. Okay, yeah. I'm sorry, I've been a bit long. <laughs> this is how, how when, you know, two presenters are trying to <laughs>